If I ask you to find the integral of x square over 1 plus x square whole square, then at first glance, from your Calculus 2 course, you might think of the standard integral of 1 over 1 plus x square, which is tan inverse of x, and thus you might think of using a trigonometric substitution like x equals tan of theta, such that dx by d theta will become sec square theta, or dx equals sec square theta d theta. Then 1 plus x square will be 1 plus tan square theta, or sec square theta, so its square will be sec theta raised to power 4. On substituting these values, the integral will become this. Sec square will be cancelled, and we will be left with this. Now tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, and sec theta is 1 over cos theta. Therefore, this will finally be equal to integral sine square theta d theta. Next, we can use this cos 2 theta identity with respect to sine square and substitute it here to finally get the answer as this. Don't forget the plus c part, as this is an indefinite integral. Now, if tan theta is x, then using this right triangle, we get sine and cos theta as these. Therefore, sine 2 theta, which is this, will then be equal to this in terms of x. So the final answer is this, and we are done. But there's another way to approach this problem, one that might suit your style, or it might not. But it's worth knowing which is Feynman's integral trick, also known as differentiation, under the integral sign. This technique can simplify integrals that look messy or intimidating by introducing a parameter into the integrand and then cleverly differentiating with respect to that parameter. So assume a function i of a equals 1 over 1 plus a times x square. We can also write this as the square root of a times x whole square. Consider t equals square root of a times x, or therefore, dt equals square root of a times dx, or dx equals dt over root a. Substitute both of them here to get this integral as dx will be dt over root a, and this denominator will be simply 1 plus t square. This root a is constant, and thus take it outside integral to get 1 over root a times integral of this, which is none other than tangent inverse of t. Now, substitute t as this to get i of a equals 1 over root a times tan inverse of x times square root of a. Now, here comes the magic. Let's differentiate both sides with respect to the parameter a. On the left-hand side, we get d i by d a, which equals d by d a of this integral. Now, for the continuous function, we can take the derivative inside the integral and it will become the partial derivative of this integrand with respect to a like this. We can rewrite this as 1 plus a times x square whole raised to minus 1. Using power rule, we get minus of 1 plus a times x square whole raised to minus 2. And then using chain rule, we multiply this with x square. Because remember, x acts as a constant here, since we are differentiating it with respect to a. So we can again rewrite it as minus x square over 1 plus a times x square whole square equals i prime of a or this integral equals minus i prime of a. Can you see something? Yes, we have this thing which almost looks like the integral we need to find. To find its value, we will use this i of a and then differentiate it with respect to a. That is, the derivative of 1 over root a times tangent inverse of x root a with respect to a. Rewrite 1 over root a as a raised to minus 1 half. We can use product rule of derivative for the same. So let the first term be a raised to minus half, and the second term be tan inverse of x root a. Now, applying product rule, the derivative of the first term is minus 1 by 2 times a, raised to minus 3 by 2. And the second term remains as it is, which is tan inverse of x root a. Then, 
For the second part of product rule, we keep the first term a raised to minus half as it is and differentiate the second term. To differentiate tan inverse of x root a, we again use chain rule. The derivative of tan inverse of something is 1 over 1 plus that something square, so we get 1 over 1 plus x square times a, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside part, that is x root a. The derivative of x root a with respect to a is x times 1 by 2 root a. So the full derivative becomes this. We can simplify both of them to get 1 over 2 times a, and that's it. But this integral is minus i prime of a, which will be this. Next part is super duper easy. Simply put, a equals 1 on both sides to get our original integral as this which exactly matches with the one we found using trigonometric substitution. Don't forget the plus c, as this is an indefinite integral. Whether or not this method feels natural to you, it's definitely a powerful tool to have in your integration toolbox. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!